Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the early Jurassic, the ancestors of modern crocodilians diverged from their Notosuchian cousins. These were the Neosuchians, a successful and diverse group that tended to inhabit more semi-aquatic niches, in contrast to more basal lineages of Pseudosuchians, which were mostly terrestrial animals. Most Neosuchians, with some notable exceptions, would have strongly resembled modern crocodiles and alligators with low-slung bodies, armoured backs, and flattened, powerful skulls built for snapping at prey. Another defining trait of the group was the possession of a notch between the maxilla and premaxilla in the jaw, although this feature was lost in some derived neosuchians such as alligatorids. These animals thrived during the Jurassic and Cretaceous, inhabiting niches often very similar to living crocodilians. However, despite what I've just said, the most basal Neosuchians were firmly terrestrial animals. These were the Atoposaurids, a group of small carnivores that were most common in the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous of Europe. Members of this family dwelt on the tropical island archipelagos that made up this region, inhabiting niches more similar to those of modern monitor lizards. Many Atoposaurids are known from remarkably complete remains, as their fossils were preserved in Lagerstata deposits. The genus Alligatorellus was native to the late Jurassic of Germany, and was a contemporary of Archaeopteryx in the Solnhofen ecosystem. A small, blunt-snouted carnivore, Alligatorellus would have patrolled the beaches and island forests, looking for small squamates and mammals to prey on. The similarly named Alligatorium was native to France at approximately the same time, and lived a very comparable lifestyle. Among the best studied of the Atoposaurids was the genus Knetzcosuchus, found in Kimmeridgian age deposits in Germany and Portugal. Like all members of its family, this was a small carnivore that measured roughly 55 centimetres or 22 inches long in life. Possessing a short snout, wide skulls and elongated limbs, Knetzkosuchus inhabited a coastal environment similar to modern mangrove swamps and would have fed on invertebrates, small mammals and reptiles. Atoposauridae was thought to have died out by the early Cretaceous, Although the description of the Maastrichtian aged Aprosuchus from the Hatseg Island in Romania demonstrated that the group survived in Europe until the KPG extinction event. This is yet another example that shows the strange endemism of the European archipelago during the Cretaceous. A more derived family of Neosuchians that would have much more closely resembled modern forms were the Goniophilids. These were moderately sized semi-aquatic predators that inhabited a wide range both temporally and geographically. Goniophilids first appear in the fossil record during the early Jurassic and inhabited most of what is now Eurasia and North America. Despite their superficial similarity to crocodiles and alligators, these animals possessed a number of unique traits lacking in modern Neosuchians. Their osteoderm armour was quite simple and flattened, unlike the complex structures present in crocodilians while the forelimbs were either as long or longer than the hind limbs, perhaps suggesting that goniophilids evolved from more terrestrial ancestors. In addition, the early Cretaceous European genus Antiopthalmosuchus possessed forward-facing eyes, unlike the more side-facing eyes of living crocodilians. At an estimated 4 metres or 13 feet long, this animal would have been a powerful predator that targeted the small ornithischian Hypsilophodon and perhaps juvenile individuals of Iguanodon. Goniophilids also appear to have been common in the early Cretaceous of Thailand, with three genera recovered from fossil sites in the country. The genus Amphicotylus, meanwhile, was native to the famous late Jurassic Morrison Formation, being a contemporary of Allosaurus, Diplodocus and Stegosaurus. A semi-aquatic ambush hunter, comparable in size to the modern Chinese alligator, Amphicotylus has been demonstrated to have possessed a gular valve in the mouth that enabled the animal to breathe through its nostrils while the rest of the skull was under the water. This feature is also seen in modern crocodiles and alligators, which suggests that goniophilids were similarly semi-aquatic ambush predators. These animals thrived during the Jurassic and early Cretaceous, but appear to have declined somewhat after this with the North American genus Denozenosuchus persisting until the campanian maastrichtian boundary. It is possible that the diversification of more derived Eusuchians led to their general decline, but this is pure speculation on my part. In a more derived, albeit uncertain, position within Neosuchia were the Stomatosuchids. 
These were very specialised and unusual animals that were native to North Africa during the Cenomanian stage of the Cretaceous, between 100 and 95 million years ago. Only two genera are known, with the smaller of the pair being the genus Lagonosuchus. With a name meaning pancake crocodile, this up to 6 metre or 20 foot long animal possessed a greatly elongated and flattened skull that would have functioned as a fish trap, with Lagonosuchus lying still for hours and waiting for prey to swim into its open mouth. The jaws were capable of exerting only a very weak bite, but this was perfectly acceptable for a predator that simply needed to swallow prey whole. A larger relative, Stomatosuchus, was native to Egypt and may have measured up to 10 metres or 33 feet long. Like Lagonosuchus, this spoon-jawed animal would have fed on small fish that swam into its open mouth. Unfortunately, the only known specimens of this genus were destroyed when the Munich Museum was bombed during the Second World War, leaving only written descriptions and photos. The skull, which was almost 8 feet long, may also have been toothless, with Stomatosuchus potentially possessing a throat pouch similar to modern pelicans. This will remain speculation, however, until more specimens are recovered. Another notable Neosuchian was the genus Bernisartia, a far more generalised form that lived in the early Cretaceous of Europe and North America. Strongly resembling modern crocodilians, Bernisartia was among the smallest crocodiliforms to have ever lived, measuring just 60 centimetres or 2 feet long. Probably semi-aquatic in nature, it had long pointed teeth at the front of the jaws that would have been useful for catching fish, but broad, flat teeth at the back of the jaws that were more suited for crushing hard food, such as shellfish and possibly bones. Close relatives of Bernisartia include the widespread and successful Paralligatorids, which possessed a cosmopolitan distribution and ranged between the late Jurassic and the Maastrichtian. An early example of the group was the genus Batrachomimus, from the late Jurassic of Brazil. Measuring about 1 metre or 3 feet 3 inches long, this was a superficially gharial-like animal, with narrow, elongated jaws that suggest a diet composed mostly of fish. In complete contrast to this, some significantly later Paralligatorids possessed very blunt snouts that were adapted for crushing hard-shelled prey. A perfect example of this was the genus Scolomastax, a small dog-sized form that was native to Cenomanian age deposits of Texas. Dwelling along the Appalachian edge of the North American Interior Seaway, Scolomastax probably fed mostly on hard-shelled prey such as snails and bivalves, but may have also scavenged when the opportunity presented itself. Another notable Brevirostrine form was Chamosuchus, which was present in Campanian aged Mongolia between 75 and 71 million years ago. Another small form, Chamosuchus inhabited a fertile swampland ecosystem and fed on a diet of aquatic invertebrates. Another larger genus dwelt at the same time and place, with this being Paralligator itself. Known from well-preserved skull material, this animal would have more closely resembled a modern crocodile, with a triangular skull when seen from above, equipped with powerful jaws. Probably an ambush predator, Paralligator could have targeted any number of contemporary dinosaurs, including oviraptorids, alverosaurs, and ornithomimosaurs. As a whole, Paralligatorids appear to have survived until the KPG extinction event, when many Cretaceous pseudosuchian lineages also became extinct. The derived lineage Eusuchia, which contains modern crocodilians and their closest extinct relatives, had emerged by the early Cretaceous. However, the size and scope of this clade will require a separate video to analyse. For now, we will conclude this episode by considering the sister genus of Eusuchia, the Brazilian Suzisuchus. Much like Bernasatia, this was a tiny, generalised, semi-aquatic predator that measured up to 70 centimetres long and probably fed on amphibians and small reptiles, being comparable to the modern African dwarf crocodiles. It would appear that all Eusuchians evolved from forms similar to this, diversifying greatly during the second half of the Cretaceous and surviving into the Cenozoic, but that is a story best left for another time. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the Victorian sea serpent craze and its possible inspirations. See you again soon. Cheerio.